My daughter and I are touring Portugal. Come and join us as we head up from Ericeira through Mafra to Santarém for lunch. We work there in the afternoon and then head deep into the country for an awesome night at a wonderful new ecology we just found. So just to recap, yesterday we completed an exhausting day touring Lisbon and Cascais through the eyes of Isabella's school called BGA, having arrived in Almada on the south side of Lisbon's Teja River the night before. As I mentioned, today we're heading up from Ericeira up through the center to Santarém, spending the afternoon in Santarém, and then heading down to the Soij Eco Lodge, which is, I'm dying to show you guys. Last night was actually a bit tricky. We were in Ericeira and trying to find a bed because it was the only night that we hadn't planned. And we couldn't find a single bed in the whole of Ericeira. So we went up to Mafra, spent the night at this great little hotel, um, and we had breakfast there. And now we're heading down to Ericeira just to go and check out the surfing. All right, it's a bit chilly this morning, like 15 degrees, as you can see on the windscreen. But we're going past one of the most incredible palaces in the whole of Portugal. 1,383 workers died creating this masterpiece, which started off as a modest friary for monks observing vows of poverty. Now, once King John V realized how much wealth was flowing in from Brazilian gold and diamond mines, he sharply changed his mind and built one of the largest palaces in Portugal, coming in at 40,000 square meters. Construction began in 1717 and lasted for 13 years until 730. And at its highest, there were like 45,000 workers there per day. It was normally it was an average of about 15,000, but that was at its absolute highest. It's a phenomenal building. I mean, the scale of it is really incredible. You've got to go there. Rafael, Morning. how's it going? I'm Nick. Um, so this is BGA Ericeira. Yeah, this is BGA Ericeira. Welcome. So, uh, bon dia. Good morning, Constanza. Good morning, Nick. Thank you so much for having us here at the BG, BGA Ericeira Hub. That's Thank good. you. Thank you for coming. How long have you guys been going for? We open uh, in January, late January, around the 26th, if I recall correctly. Okay. Yes, with uh, six or eight learners. And now we have a full hub with 30 learners. Wow, that's a quick. So has it been a really fast acceleration? Yes, very fast. Before the summer break, we had already like almost 20. Uh -huh. And then the new enrollment for the new academic year, which is a full, full hub. We got a full hub and already opened the second hub in Edisaida. Oh, you have already yes, got the second yes, one now? Yes, yes, So is that just a little bit further down? Yes, in the mm -hmm. Indy Service Centre. Okay. And, and the students or the learners who come here, mm -hmm. um, what's, are they sort of from all different nationalities or some Portuguese? All, or? All, from all around the world. Uh, all, all cultures, all backgrounds. So it's, it's really, really amazing. And I think it's a, a valuable experience. These, these kids will work in an international in international companies, so here they are already having that experiment of having to deal with people from all uh, yeah, cultural backgrounds. Cool, okay. And um, do you think that there's quite a big adjustment because, for example, my daughter, she's a BGA as well, and she went from a normal government school in Portugal to BGA, and it was a little bit of an adjustment. Do, do you find that people have to adjust a lot? Yes, yes. We always give them some weeks in the beginning when they arrive to start exploring the platform and kind of understand what is this about self-directed learning, um, making their own goals and working weekly to achieve them with the weekly checklists. And it takes them a little bit. Some are more prepared, mm -hmm. usually the older ones, the ones from lower secondary. It's, it's, a, good, it's a good moment to catch them and start preparing them earlier. Mm. early um, but it takes a little bit of, a, of an adjustment but I, I think in a, in a good way they are they become accountable they, they it's their own goals sometimes Absolutely. parents freak out a little bit yeah. 
Yeah. And we say we have, they have to own it to pursue it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've got to let go and let them take control. Right? Yes. But it's amazing. It's an incredible experiment that it seemed to work incredibly well. Yes. Like from what, zero kids to 600 kids in a year or something. So what about you? Are you from any I am. We moved here in 2016 wow. when Lisbon was getting crowded and crowded and crowded. We escaped. Nice. <laughs> yes, yeah, escaped here and yes. Yeah, so and is Eliseira getting more and more crowded now? Oh yes, a lot of uh, digital nomads. So mm. there's a huge international community here, and many of these families are looking for BGI. Mm -hmm. And most of the guys out there watch my channel. Love. Uh, they're from America. A lot of them are from America, a lot of them from the United Kingdom. Have you seen more Americans coming to Eddie Saturday? Yes, yes. Uh, in the beginning we had no American families and now I think we have five, five okay. families from, yes. from the United States. Well, that's brilliant. Thank you, Constanza. Thanks so much for, for uh, having us here and thank uh, you. thanks for chatting to us about Eddie Saturday. Thank you, thank you, Nick. Oh, yeah. Let's go outside. And here is the lunch area normally. Where people can play football as well, just chilling. Uh, and then we have a much uh, larger exterior area. Here it's also a study room that we found and created. So they, yeah, so they can watch the sand and the sea over here. And then we have a basketball court uh, over there and the beach actually so they can just go and, and go to the sea, surf, skate. And they're so, allowed to go to the sea which is fantastic. Yes, right? they are allowed to go to the sea and normally uh, accompany but we actually love that. We love that they, they combine studying as well as surfing or playing basketball or, or skating. I want to go to school here. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to go to school as well honestly. <laughs> Now, according to statistics from the Servicios de Estrangeros of Fronteras, which is the immigration agency in Portugal, total amount of foreigners in the whole Lisbon region is 294,000, which is the highest in the country, out of a total of almost 700,000 foreigners. In Ericeira, or in Mafra, the council, there are 6,116 registered foreigners as of 2021. And the interesting thing is that the majority of those are Brazilians, like 2,800 of them. And then second, Ukrainian, uh, and third, Romanian, and fourth, United Kingdom. Italy follows in fifth with 265 Italians. And down in 12th place is the Americans with 105 registered Americans in 2021 in Eddie Interesting facts. Check out the Eddie Zeta surf contest. Let me just go like that. We hope we don't hit people. Wow. That's what Pedro always used to do. <laughs> Sorry, did I, did I hit you? Almost. <laughs> Not quite. Not quite. All right, let's head up to Mafra and on the way to Santarém. We're, um, we've left, we're just leaving the WSL event here in Eddie Sada, heading up to Mafra to pick up some stuff that I left behind in the hotel. Duh. And then we're heading off to Santarang to go and see the BGA hub there this afternoon. I think I might just do a walking tour of Santarang, you never know. We'll see how it goes. But uh, on the road again. We just arrived in Santa Rosa. Quick update, and we found Isabella actually found 
the black frog so we're gonna go and check that out looks like a very expensive and swanky restaurant but the whole idea of this video is to take you around portugal and show you the best spots it's not because we want to eat beautifully well no 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 nah, nah. it's for you that we do this <laughs> <laughs> it's 30 degrees here in santarang really wow hot 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 let's go check out the black frog Beetroot bread with bacon butter. Oh wow, it tastes like. like it tastes really good. Like bread. It's not bad. Wow. Before we head over to BGA Santarang, I just want to tell you how excited I am about going to this eco lodge tonight. It's amazing. I've seen photographs and it looks fantastic. Let's hope it holds up to expectations. Hi. We just arrived at BGA in Santarang and um, there's two people here at the moment because it's Friday afternoon, so it's really chill. So we're just going to do a little video walkthrough and uh, check the place out and meet the learning coach. Hi uh, PJ. How's it guys? How are you? Nice to meet you. I'm Nick. PJ, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So this is BGA Santarang, right? Yes, yes. Could you just maybe guide us a little bit, just do a circuit around sure, here? Sure, sure, no problem. So this is obviously our main um, study area, okay? Uh, we try and make it as comfortable as possible for the guys, you know. We've got a, an Alexa here, so the guys are more than welcome to play their own music when they like. Uh, we also have a projector over there. That's, the guys can put Formula One, football, that sort of thing on if they want to. Uh, the news, most of the time. Uh, as you can see, our, our learners are pretty disciplined and well focused, which is quite nice. Uh, this is guys, they're just acting, they were playing table tennis four minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Francisco, Ibrahim. I was just joking. <laughs> Um, so obviously we, we have a focus room mm -hmm. that I decided to turn into a mini table tennis court. Uh, you know, just for the guys to unwind and you know when things get a bit too stressful, they 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 need you know competitiveness amongst each other and just to release a bit of steam. Absolutely, it's vital for team building, isn't it? Definitely, really definitely. Because at the end of the day, you know, like they, they they rely on each other for a lot of like motivation, and at the end of the day, it's important for them to interact as well. Yeah, for sure. Uh, back here, you've obviously got your bathrooms. Okay, you have your little kitchen area, nice all, it's like sort of a relax, uh, relaxation zone. Yes, vegetarian is an old Indian way for a bad hunter. Yeah. I love that it, sometimes it makes its, its way into some of the hubs and other hubs it's been removed. Yes, <laughs> I have heard that, but so far we haven't had any incidents, so I'm just going to leave it up there for now. Good for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, and then back here we have our you know, sort of chess playing area. Here we have the famous black wall. So blackboard, black wall, you can write whatever you want on it. So motivational things. We have a learner that, as you can see, he draws and then he rubs it out. Uh, it's quite uh, artistic. We've also got obviously arting ideas for the guys, ideas for the hubs. So I mean, one of the learners, Ibrahim, uh, wrote real size mannequin of Lionel Messi. So I mean, that's some of the ideas that we encourage. Oh, that's what you want to have in the hub. It's what he wants to have. I wouldn't say it's like a, a, a wholesome or... Uh, because Ronaldo is clearly a bit of choice, right? You're going to have to ask somebody who knows a bit more about that. So that would be Ibrahim himself. Ibrahim, what do you think? Um, Messi or Ronaldo? Oh, Messi, of course. Of course, Messi. Okay. But Messi's not Portuguese. Yeah, but uh, he's one of the greatest players in the world. So that's one. <laughs> Ronaldo's better. There we go. There we go. I always like a normal school to like a sardine factory where everyone comes out the same yeah. tin. The, the, the concept behind that old fashioned schooling seating system is actually to get them used to working in a, a, in a factory. In a factory, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. factory workers. No factories anymore. No.
Not Definitely many. Definitely not. Yeah. Run by robots. Yeah. So, um, how many people have you got here in, in the Santa Ring Hub? At the moment, I have four. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. at the moment, I have four. Uh, two of them generally leave at about half past two, uh, the two brothers, and then I'm usually left with Ibrahim and Francisco until I close. And so you said 75% of them, or three of them, are Portuguese, which is fantastic. Yes, yes, okay, yeah. Uh, three of them are Portuguese, and then obviously the one quarter is from Dubai. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. I mean, um, Santarém, from what you found in the brief time you've been here, have you found any many other expats? Or is there an expat culture here of foreigners? Not so much so uh, expats. There's a lot of people who live in or work in Lisbon and actually live in Santarém. And mm -hmm. I found out the reason why that's so is because during COVID, you know, people obviously wanted to get out of populated areas. Yeah. So you'll find a lot of people here are actually from Lisbon originally. Okay. Yeah. So they're working in Lisbon and commuting every night back to yes. Santa Yeah. And, and the train lines are really efficient as well, aren't they? Yes, so yeah. it's a, it's yeah. just cruise along the station. I wouldn't say that they're anything later than two or three minutes. Oh, really? Yeah. That's good news, because yeah. in the Algarve, different story. Uh, Peter, thanks so much. I no really problem. appreciate it, and I hope you enjoy your weekend in Lisbon. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Nick. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. There's a life I lead in this city Hurrying to cut my teeth I can take what I need to get by It doesn't make it easy The other piece of my heart moves slower Somewhere in the great unknown When I return from the afterglow Will you carry me like I am? There are about 30,000 people living in Santarém, of which 10% are foreigners. Again, almost a third of those 3,000 are Brazilian, with Indians, Romanians and Ukrainians following closely behind. Only 50 registered British people and 15 registered foreigners from the USA live there in 2021, according to CEF. As I mentioned earlier, Santarém is an hour from Lisbon by train and car, and it has a rich history. I mean, there were settlements in the area way before, but the city itself is attributed to the Romans, who named it Scalabus. It was an important commercial post due to the proximity of the Tagus River. And Julius Caesar himself actually ordered a military garrison to be created here in 61 BC. Santarang was hit by earthquakes in 1531 and 1755, and also sustained a lot of damage during the Napoleonic invasions in the early 19th century. In recent times, it's mainly been an agricultural centre and remains quite an exciting spot to live, just not being so far from Lisbon. I want it all. I had a feeling, but the feeling is all gone. It's Friday afternoon and we definitely got that lazy weekend vibe coming on. So we headed off and we headed down back to the Soij Montejunto Eco Lodge. And we're really excited to get here because never seen this before, I heard quite a lot about it. So here it is. Take you back to my youth and show you what I wish I knew. My will is strong with the. Yeah, we just arrived here in, how do you say it? Montes, Montes 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 Junto. Montes Junto yeah. Soij Lodge. Yeah, Soij, uh, Monte Junto, Soij, uh, it's the, the sun in plural. Okay. Soij. And uh, Monte Junto is the mountain and the uh, eco lodge. Yeah. Okay, so it's one soul and those Soij. And eight suns. Eight suns. Okay, so each <laughs> each, each dome, dome is a yeah, sun. Yeah, each dome represents a sun. Awesome. And you and you're growing quite a lot now. I can see there's space for more, huh? Exactly. So it's uh, the plan is to to grow up to twenty to twenty. Not probably not all gonna be domes, the same uh, the same uh, space, but uh -huh. it's gonna be wooden houses or uh, other okay. more different types of accommodation oh like cabins or something or whatever yeah, yeah exactly. but it's so beautiful this valley is just like amazing it really is lovely so how did you find it or how did the how did the story start who who started the whole thing so uh there were quite four investors uh, that came here they like to cycle mm -hmm. uh so they came here and they checked uh, the valley they're from south africa uh two are from south africa because ah, i'm south africa 
Ah, you are from. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so two are from South Africa and two are from Brazil. Okay. Yeah, they live now in Portugal, mm -hmm. but yeah, they came here, they checked this area, they saw that the demand uh, for accommodation was big and there was not much uh, offer. And so, yeah, they, they checked this, this specifically place, they said that this is the best uh, view of this uh, area, mm -hmm. and then they bought the land. And here we are in this... Uh, Sounds so easy. Just buy the land well, and cut it. But I know for a fact it's very difficult trying to find the right permissions to build it. And true. Has it been a long time? In, in it's been a long time. They start planning this in 2018. Wow. So it was a good four years ago, yeah? Uh-huh. Yeah. And we just opened in September. So you can see, of course, we got the pandemic time and it was not easy to get the permits to, to build in a rural area. Mm -hmm because this place was just a monoculture of uh, wine plants. Oh, okay. Like vineyards everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, and they managed to, to get through this paperwork uh, a lot in the city hall, a lot of difficulties. <laughs> I'm sure, no, I can imagine. And the interior design, was it done by a special firm or something? Because it's really beautiful. Uh, no, actually we, we hired this uh, constructor, but Mainly uh, the, the ideas came from uh, one of the investors okay. that is, was more on the, on the terrain mm -hmm. uh, while the construction was going on. Mm. And uh, yeah, uh, awesome. we wanted to make it rural, mm. but in other eyes uh, to have the comfort in, the, in the nature. And how That's about you, concept. Neda? Are you from this area? Or? No, I'm from the Algarve. Are you? So right. we live in the Algarve. It's yeah, fantastic. it's the best. <laughs> yeah. Where are about in Algarve? Portimao. Ah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's the best. Yeah, yeah I'm actually from Alvo, and that's my, my okay. area. Excellent. Because um, a lot of the people, you guys out there, know the Algarve very well, because I've been making videos all about the Algarve. Yeah, I saw that. And uh, mm. yeah, Algarve is very nice, but also it has a lot of uh, touristic offer. Here, in this place, main, most of the Portuguese don't know. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know. But these villages around <laughs> here are really old and small and it's, yeah, it's really, yeah. really authentic. It's, it's really authentic. Yeah. This mountain uh, guards a, a story from millenniums. We have uh, here in Acropo, mm. uh, there, is, there was this uh, royal uh, ice factory from the nobles. Oh, right. Yeah, <laughs> right. In the, top, uh, in the top of the mountain, they were making ice putting it in the, in the donkeys uh, with the hay and carrying on to the river, Teju, and delivering in, in Lisbon to the palaces. So how do they make the so ice? They because, get, because it's cold in the winter. And exactly. Okay. So they have their uh, a different microclimate because of the ocean conditions. This mountain stops this uh, formation from the ocean and gets on top of the... Um, it gets stuck there, mm -hmm. and so it makes the ice because it's way cooler there. Amazing. Yeah. That's an incredible story. <laughs> it's incredible, yeah. yeah. I wish we could sit here all night, but fortunately you got to go. Yeah. But uh, yeah, thanks so much for, for telling us about this, and all thanks right. so much for the night. We'll hope to... Thank I'm you. I'm sure you'll enjoy Thank it. Thank you for staying with us, and I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. <laughs>
and some strange yeah chips doesn't like chips and shit a bit don't know if that goes together does it Before, uh, sorry, before I go to sleep, I just want to say thank you so much for watching BGA's second day of the video, the second day of the BGA tour around Portugal. And uh, we'll be here tomorrow. We're going to be doing this for another eight days, I think. Uh, so join us tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Holgarvaddicts.com